So these Baltimore Ravens let us loudly know that they ain't done yet. Eric DaCosta specifically, he ain't try to tiptoe around it. He ain't try to word it in a certain way. No, he let us know like we ain't done yet. So of course, uh, yesterday, Eric DaCosta, he had a presser. And he had a lot, he said a lot in a short amount of time, but something that really, really stuck out was when somebody asked him about cap space. What are you going to do to make some cap space? Are you going to have to restructure some deals to make some cap space? And he said, yeah, that, that is a possibility, but he says he just wants to make sure that the Ravens are in a position where they have enough cap space to make a trade before the deadline. And one could think, oh, Eric Acosta just saying that. He's just trying to put that out there just to throw some teams off. But when you look at the history, especially when you look at the recent history, you know Eric Acosta ain't afraid to make no trade. And you know Eric Acosta is always willing, always talking, and always trying to get something done when it comes to the trade market. Ravens have been very active on the trade market uh, ever since Eric Acosta took over, especially on the defensive side of the ball. So one would think like, oh, Eric DaCosta putting it out like that? I respect it. Because Eric DaCosta, was, he was talking with his chest all the way out, not holding nothing back. And I loved it. I'm like, whoa, okay, Eric. And, and then what, what made it even better is that he talked about how teams have been a little more reluctant. They've been a little more hesitant uh, to make deals with him recently. They've been calling a little bit less. Uh, and I think it's because teams have seen that for the majority of his trades not all of them but for the majority of them Ravens have pretty much come out on top and there have been some that have just been like really lopsided and it's been like really they got him for that obviously one of the biggest ones was the fifth round pick and Kenny Young uh for Marcus Peters immediate impact consistent impact Marcus Peters he he was a great addition uh, the fifth round pick for Calais Campbell. And, oh, yeah, we know about him. That was another one. Uh, second round pick for Roquan Smith. So, yeah, those were some nice ones. Now, there was the, the picks for Yannick Ngakwe. Those ain't quite working out as much, but, hey, you can't hit all the time. But anyway, um, so I, I thought that that was interesting. Now, what could they do before the deadline? What kind of move could they possibly make? I think that all just depends on how things are. Um, something that Eric DeCasa brought out was that he appreciated how the Ravens were a lot more healthier going into the season than they had been in recent years. And that is a very, very good point. And he gave credit to John Harbaugh uh, for that. Um, something else that he spoke about. Um, he credited OBJ and Lamar Jackson, their attitudes and whatnot, but, but sticking with OBJ. Uh, he said he really liked what he saw uh, and what he's been seeing from OBJ, how he's been stepping up as a leader and whatnot. He's keeping himself in good shape, and he expects big things out of OBJ uh, as long as Odell Beckham Jr. stays healthy. And I think a lot of us are expecting the same thing. But speaking about wide receivers, uh, he said that they've been getting some calls about offensive players in general, but specifically their wide receivers. And I was like, huh? Ray Ravens? Little Ravens? Are they getting what? Uh, and he said, this is the first year people called us looking for receivers. That was a joke at first, but it was actually kind of cool. And when you really think about that, it's like, man, like, really? They called the Ravens for wide receiver? Like, what year is this? Well, I mean, that never happened before. Since when would people be interested in Ravens wide receivers? And it got me to thinking, I was like, hmm. If they were interested in wide receivers... Which wide receivers were they interested in? Obviously not Odell Beckham Jr. He signed to a, a one-year deal. Of course, got that four void years on there. Um, and it's a one-year, $18 million deal, 15 mil guaranteed. No, that ain't it. Not Zay Flowers. They know Ravens ain't trading no first-round pick this year. No, no that, 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 that wouldn't be it. Nelson Aguilar, uh, it could be. But nah, I don't think that's it either. But two people that really stood out to me uh, were Rashad Bateman. And Devin DuVernay. And those were two people who some trade rumors had floated around. Or not even rumors, but thoughts uh, amongst a lot of Ravens fans uh, had floated around a lot. Especially with, with me, with um, with Rashad Bateman. I was thinking, ooh, oh, 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 this could, I don't know. Especially when it was they were talking about all the, the, all the DeAndre Hopkins stuff. I was thinking, oh, I, now I wanted to keep him. I still wanted to get DeAndre Hopkins too and keep Rashad Bateman too. But I was thinking, ooh. I don't know, man. It ain't looking good. And especially when, when he sent out the tweet about 
the, the, the Ravens GM and stuff And about they need to take care of their players and all that I said, ooh, yeah, he's out of here, buddy And I mean, it could still happen later I don't think this year, but maybe next year But they'll cross that road uh, when they get there Um but I mean, hopefully not. Hopefully, Rashad Bateman he balls out and he shows like, hey, I was a first round pick too, and there's a reason. And he puts it all out there this year, and he can have a fully healthy season. Just really, everybody can have a fully healthy season. Um, but Rashad Bateman was a candidate that I definitely thought about. But another one, and I saw a lot of people thought about this one too, was Devin Duvernay. Uh, because Devin Duvernay, with all the additions that the Baltimore Ravens made, uh, especially at wide receiver, you could think, oh, well, Devin Duvernay, what is his role? What's his spot? Uh, what would he be doing? How would he fit in into this offense? And it's like, yeah, he, he may get some opportunities. He's he going to get some opportunities, but they'll be far and few. And the Ravens may look at it like, huh, we could come up off of this money. He's a special teams player. We got some other guys that could, we, we could use in a return game, but Devin Duvernay, he's not going to be featured nearly as much as he was before, I don't think, because before it was Rashad Bateman, it was Demarcus Robinson. It was Devin Duvernay. Those are your top three guys. Rashad Bateman got hurt. So now it's like, oh, Demarcus Robinson, Devin Duvernay. Boom. There you go. But now you got Rashad Bateman. You got Odell Beckham Jr. You got Zay Flowers. You got Nelson Aguilar. You got Devin Duvernay. And you got Tylen Wallace. So Devin Duvernay, he moved way down uh, on the depth chart in just a year. And not because he's a bad player at all. No, that's not it. But just Ravens just brought in so much and so much that would, is expected to be above him on the depth chart. So I definitely could see if it was teams calling about Doof because teams could look at it like, oh, yeah, Ravens, they ain't got no place for him. And Ravens, they love them some draft picks. Oh, let's let, let shoot Ravens a third-round pick. Shoot him a fourth-round pick. They'll come up off of Devin Doof. He's in the last year of his contract. Ravens ain't going to pay him. Let's see what they got. Let's see what they're talking about. And but that's that's a beautiful feeling to have. Like think about that, because and, and and there were a lot of people that thought Devin Duvernay was going to be going too. But think about it, like Ravens getting calls on their wide receivers. Wow. Now another thing that I literally just thought about just now during this recording, like literally just now, with Eric DeCosta putting that out there. Because again, as a GM, it's always a game. GM stands for game manager. It don't just stand for general manager. It stands for game manager. Eric DeCosta always be playing because he always. You always trying to make business moves and whatnot, so I get it. But one thing that I think I think this could also be possibly, possibly, I'm hoping they keep everybody. But I know it's a business; you can't keep everybody. They won't keep everybody. But I wonder if Eric DaCosta is putting that out there, like, "Oh yeah, we've been getting calls about our wide receivers, but we like our wide receivers." But I wonder if he's putting that out there to garner more interest in maybe somebody like a Devin Duvernay, possibly. Maybe somebody like a Tylen Wallace. But I would think more so Devin Duvernay. I think they would get more for Devin Duvernay. Now, I don't want them to trade him now. But I'm just thinking about the business side of things. What if Eric DeCosta just, he's trying to put some feelers out there. And maybe he may have gotten some calls already. But he like, you know what? That's not enough. So he's putting it out there publicly. Oh, yeah, hey, team's been calling us about our wide receivers. But we like our guys. A lot of times when GMs or coaches, whatever, they put it out publicly. That means like, hey, no, we want more. You need to step your game up. You need to offer us something much better than the garbage that you've been putting out because we ain't taking that. We got other people that's on our line right now, ready and willing to make a deal. So y'all are the GMs, y'all better come correct. But I, I, I just wonder, I was just thinking out loud with that one. Could it be, hey, it could be, or it may not be. Hey, maybe, maybe he likes that guys. Maybe he likes the wide receivers on the team. And he does intend to keep them all. I think it would be better to keep them all. Again, stay ready so you ain't got to get ready, right? Because wide receiver right now, this sounds so crazy to say as a Ravens fan. Wide receiver right now is a position of strength. Wow. Wow, that, that felt weird. That felt really weird. Wide receiver, as a Baltimore Ravens fan, wide receiver is a position of strength. Who would have ever thought we would say that? Ever. That is insane. Wide receiver is a position of strength. So, I say that to say this. You say, for instance, they trade Devin Duvernay away. You get some draft picks or whatnot. Okay, cool. Still got Tyler Wallace, too. Okay, cool. Keaton Mitchell will be back in a couple of weeks. Okay, cool. Could be a new return guy. Okay, cool. But 
we don't like thinking about the what ifs, but you got to think about the what ifs because the what ifs in years past have been what is. What if Rashad Bateman got hurt? What if Odell Beckham Jr. got hurt? We don't want them to get hurt, of course. But what if? What if somebody got hurt? What if somebody missed a little bit of time or whatnot? And that you traded away one of your receivers who had had a starting experience last year. So now you're that much more thin. So, again, I just, I don't want them to trade Devin Duvall. I don't want them to trade any of the receivers, really. I want them to keep them all. Um, he said that they called about the tight ends, too. Uh, I guess they, they were liking what they saw from Charlie Collar because nobody would have to trade for um for Travis Vokalek because he's on, he's on a practice squad. Oh, if somebody want to Travis Vokalek, all they got to do is sign him off the practice squad to the active roster. That's it. That's it. It's easy. But they were probably calling about Charlie Collar or or Charlie Collar, excuse me, or Isaiah Likely. So, hey, man, it's a business. Don't don't trade none of them away either, Eric DeCosta. Keep all your tight ends as well. Because you know Mark be getting tired, man. Mark, like, man, I'm... I get like 50 targets a game. I, I'm tired, man. I mean, he won them 50 targets a game. What else is it? I don't want to see Mark mid-game throwing his helmet on the ground and breaking it like he did in practice that day. But, yeah, keep keep all your tight ends, man. Don't 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 get rid of none of the tight ends, EDC. But, yeah, man, this was um, it's interesting time. This is, like, think about this, too. This is the last Saturday without football. It's the last, the final Saturday without football. So, and then of course, there it is, college football. Man, that's cool, but it, pros are different, or at least for me. But this is the last Saturday that we have, where we going into the next, the, what, the, the following Sunday, without a game to watch. That's it. Next week, come this time, Saturday, to the next day, we'll be watching the Ravens play the Texans. Oh, it feels good, too. Feels really, really good, but I'm excited, man. But I love y'all, team. Keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. Man, y'all are great. Y'all are amazing. And don't let nobody tell you no different. Um, thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting the videos. Thank you for watching all the videos. Thank you for continuing to watch them all the way through, too. I really, really appreciate that, man. Y'all are very special. Y'all are very important people. Y'all keep doing what you've been doing. And on that note, we are out.